Here's the patient today. It has uh, special solenoid problems and uh, no sound. Part of the special solenoid problems was torn through holes at this transistor. So I use these funnelettes to repair that through hole. Thanks, Jerry Claus, for that tip. Booting a System 11N, as we call it now. High-speed MPU, listen for the tink. Tink, there it is. Displays up. And the lamp matrix working. And the only coil that's turned on right now is the coil 16, which is the coin door lockout coil. So this board, the client had replaced a couple of drive transistors here. And then after that happened, he noted that he no longer had that solenoid working and the flippers weren't working either. The real root cause of the problem was well, two things. I, I repaired Q, what is that, 68 there with a couple of through hole rivets as uh, the traces weren't making with the center and right leg of that 2N4401, I think it is. And U45 was blown also, so I installed the socket like I always do and replaced it. Elsewhere on this board, I replace this cap, which is in the reset section. These three are on the power input, two over here in the sound generation, and two 10 microfarad axials also in the sound generation. Installed a NVRAM module, and there was a tiny bit of corrosion. Here you can see where I've scraped this down to bare copper with some sandpaper, and I did replace SR2. You'll note that pin 10 is vacant there. That is where the connection to ground would be. If this was an SRC, as in the original uh, installation. So I've noted everything that was done here. Oh yeah, I forgot. Uh, the sounds weren't working. And so I probed U9, pins two through nine are where the sounds are sent in from U10. And that was working fine but nothing was coming out of the PB pins 11 through 17 section of this 6821. So I removed it cleanly, put a socket in, installed an NOS chip, and we're good to go now. Somebody was fiddling around here earlier and suspected that the 1408 was a problem and they removed and um, socketed, maybe replaced it, I don't know, but that, that wasn't the problem. <laughs> see or hear we do have good sound now so let's uh let's start test that that sound was coming from the background soundboard, which I have one attached from my board library, I guess, uh, to this CPU board. Display test is operating perfectly fine. Next is... sounds of these old system 11s. Lamp matrix is operating correctly. I'll shade this so you don't get the interference from the overhead fluorescent lights. I'm going to skip single lamps and go right to coil test. And these are the special solenoid inputs. So while that's running over on this side, I'm going to test these. This was the solenoid that was not working before this fourth one down, but it is now. And the two bright orange LEDs at the bottom, those are the flipper power ground connections that are really part of this relay cube, which is driven by the single transistor up above. So those are all working correctly. And the next test is switch edges I'm gonna get into by 
walking down the diagonal of the switch matrix here. You can see the switch number in the lower right. And the last switch on high speed is switch 52. And there we go. I'm just going to advance through the audits and adjustments. And the CPU will reboot. I have set this to free play by setting adjustment 23 to yes. And this CPU board is good to go. I do have to take it outside and wash it down. There's some solder flux still on the back side that I always like to get rid of. And then of course, after I wash it down, I'm going to conformal coat this bare copper with a 3M, I'm sorry, with an MG Chemicals product, uh, conformal coats the copper so that it will not be subject to oxidation in the future. Thank you so much for your patience uh, as I work through the queue to get to this one. I love these stickers that uh, the client must have put on there. They're kind of kind of goth, blood-like stickers. This uh, red pen, that, a red ink pen that was in use at some point in time. Have a great week, everybody. Thank you so much.